Hello, today we are going to talk about enterprise class structure in Vega. Enterprise class structure is defined in many ways and you're going to find many different answers when you search across to the internet. But before we go into that, I do want to set the preface about uh, what we are trying to do overall. Uh, we are trying to build a license and permit application for the state of California. Uh, state by itself provide different types of licenses and permits to its residents. Uh, some of the examples are liquor license, fishing license, restaurant license. There are a total of 120 different kinds of licenses and permits. So if we have to, if, if state of California has invested into PEGA and they're looking for PEGA to provide a solution to consolidate and provide a process for managing all of these 120 different kind of licensing and permits application, how would you go about building it? This all ties back into the enterprise class structure, hence I'm defining this up front for you so that when we actually uh, get into the building of the application, you'll understand how the enterprise class structure fits and what, what are different types of applications. So, so let's, I want to introduce two important concepts to you. First, one is a framework application and the other is implementation application. Think of framework application as a generic setup application. Those are applied to any of the implementation application you may have, kind of a hierarchy, if you will. A license type, a generic license type, uh, it should have the entity name, it should have the entity address, city, state, zip, it should have a license uh, application date, license approval date, uh, it should have an expiration date, uh, renewal reminder date, all of these things are very common to any licensing application. So uh, that you can uh, define it such that you define all, the, all of these things into the framework application so that now you have a base framework application available. That, let's call it a licensing framework application. And now any new uh, implementation application, let's say you're building a liquor license or fishing license application. So that would become your implementation license. So let's go uh, flip on the other side and we will uh, we will look at how let, let's build framework application and then an implementation of an application and then we'll go into the uh, and discussion about the enterprise uh, class structure. So let's exit out of this. I'm going to log in here real quick. <clears throat> Strong window. So let's log in here. I'm going to log in at admin at pega.com. My password is the default password. Once I log in, ah, doesn't matter. Okay, go ahead and save. I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a application. First, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna go and create the framework application, and then we're gonna go and build the implementation application. And uh, the state that we're building this for, the state of California, and this can apply to any of the states, but I'm just setting the stage for you so that how when you're building all of these, how you do that for an entity or an organization and whatnot. So let's go ahead here up at the top menu. You have an application, new application. Okay. You want to choose custom. Say use this application type. And now name of my application is license. This is a framework application, remember. In order for me to define it as a framework application, instead of clicking on create application, I will actually go into the advanced configuration. Once I click on advanced configuration, PRPC or PEGA is going to give you options to choose the application structure. Let's go ahead and choose framework for now, okay? My organization here is California, right? I'm going to leave the division name and the unit name as uh, default for now. And my organization name, I just want, I don't like the word Cali, I'll just call it Cal for now, right? So by default, the organization name here, this is the class structure that's building. If you notice here, Cal-FW is the framework, and then you see hidden dash license and then work. So this is going to define the structure for the framework application. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Go ahead and create application. All 
I apologize for the slow up system here today. I have multiple VMs running on uh, my virtual machine and that's why a uh, little bit of slowness here. So PRPC just completed creating my framework application. Let's create a user. Now it's prompting me to create a user. So I'm just going to create a sample user named license FW. So it's a framework user. I'm just going to make it lowercase. Add. PRPC is going to create this user and also grant me a temporary password for it. Let's keep a note of these two user accounts first. I'm just going to save it in my notepad. I will need this next time when I log in with this users. So I'm going to go ahead and click on done. Okay. We just finished creating the framework application. But remember, the framework application is a generic license type that we have just created. Now we need to create, let's say, a liquor license uh, processing application. So let's go ahead and create one implementation application. We'll follow the same process. New application. The one important thing you have to remember, instead of now going to custom, we actually are going to choose our license framework. Just go ahead and click on use this framework type. Click on continue. Continue one more time. Now you want to name your application. So remember, this is my liquor licensing application. Go ahead and make sure you click on advanced configuration. Under advanced configuration, you want to make sure that it's selected as implementation. Instead, you want to give it proper ID. So here I'm going to say liquor. Organization name has to be the same as what we select for the framework application. So if you remember, our organization name was California. You're going to keep the division and unit is the same. In this case, we have just now created California Liquor Work. If I want, I can also generate a division layer, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Go ahead and click Save. Click on create application. At this point, PRPC is going to create my implementation application. Looks like it just finished creating implementation application. Let's create a user for implementation. Same thing that we have done for the framework application. Let's make a note of this account because we are going to log in with this account and PRPC is going to ask us to change the password first. So let's complete that formality. Okay. I'm going to click on done. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and log off from this application. I'm going to log in as implementation. This is my password, a temporary password on my dad. Let's change the password here.
Finally, I'm able to log in. Now make sure you choose Dev Studio. So this is where the enterprise cross structure comes into the picture. Uh, when we look at, we just created a liquor licensing application which is built on top of the generic licensing application, uh, which is a framework application. When we log in to the Dev Studio, let's click on App. When I click on App, this is my implementation account. And when I click here, go into the class definition, right click and view definition, you will notice that it is derived from a parent clause called work dash cover dash. This work dash cover dash is actually a directed inheritance or parent class directed inheritance. When I click here on my application side on the left hand panel, as you can notice here, the base framework is the Pega platform. Pega platform is inherited into the licensing framework that we generated. Since we built our application on licensing framework, liquor licensing inherits from licensing framework. Right? So let's look at one important, another important thing. I also want to draw your attention on an important aspect here that this is actually a concrete class. Work is a concrete class. But the moment I go one level up, and when I look at the definition of this class, it's actually an abstract class. Any level above the work class is defined as an abstract class in PRPC. Another abstract class. So, Let's look at a quick concept here. What we are going to discuss about is the directed inheritance and, and the pattern based inheritance. So we'll discuss that just in a bit. I want to show you something really quick here. We have a framework application created as a license and we have a implementation application created as a liquor. So let's click on liquor for a moment. When I click here, as you will notice here, I have got my uh, classes for my liquor created. I have uh, uh, implementation classes created. So in my liquor work class, when I click right click, and go to inheritance, as you can see, some of the classes actually are inherited based on the patterns. Some are inherited based on direct inheritance, and some of them are both. When it's pattern-based inheritance, uh, means if you're in the path of, in this case, Cal, which is California dash, liquor dash, if Cal dash liquor dash is work dash in it is inheriting from Cal dash liquor dash just by the fact that because there is no direct inheritance involved, Pega PRPC platform still allows you to uh, apply the rules declared or defined in Cal class or Cal, Cal uh, framework to be available here at the work level because it is uh, uh, defined as a as a relationship based on your path. So your path is cal dash liquor dash work. Similarly, in some cases, you can have a direct inheritance. If you are a Java programmer or if you're a .NET programmer, you have actually used direct inheritance. Anytime when you actually inherit a class from another class, a concrete class from another concrete class or an abstract class to another uh, concrete class or, or, or so on and so forth, that's actually direct inheritance when you specifically rename Remember, we created that framework application. That framework application is actually a direct inheritance to the liquor implementation application, right? But we never define cal dash liquor dash as the as the uh, as a parent of work dash. Pega PRPC automatically defined that relationship for us through a pattern based inheritance. I hope after this you understand the enterprise class structure that uh, Pega has. Remember the two most important component the pattern-based inheritance 
and the directed inheritance and how during the creation of your framework how you actually utilize both your parent based in inheritance and your so let's look at what Pega actually did when I'm trying to create the direct versus in their in their pattern based inheritance so it created uh, as you know this class that we created which is uh, which got created as a high level class Cal anything over here is actually a pattern based inheritance because we never specifically defined this so Cal is an organization Cal liquor is the li the license type and work dash is my uh, is the is the implementation class. However, we also define the framework application, and the framework itself. Uh, first of all, base class is also is inherited directly over here. This is let me change the color of the arrow over here. Anything which is purple is actually a it's actually a direct inheritance. anything red so this is a direct inheritance and this is a pattern based inheritance so let's make it real quick this is a direct The red is pattern based inheritance. I hope this clarifies and how uh, Pega interprets or takes care of uh, direct and pattern based inheritance. Both of the inheritance together actually form the basis of how PRPC platform makes it extremely extensible when it comes to defining different process flows.